So I want this whole thing to be, this is a fresh start, new beginning. Try to have a positive mental attitude as much as we can. And I think we're going to flourish. Today's episode is a different kind of episode. It's not about the base at all, except it applies to a large portion of people that listen to this podcast. It's about the orchestra industry, where it is, where it's going, and what we can do to help move things forward in a positive direction. As we're calling this Orchestra Confidential, this is with my longtime collaborator and frequent co-host, John Grillo. He's been on, I think, I just counted it up, I think 23 podcast episodes. So far, this will be 24. And he and I have chatted with people like Cleveland Orchestra Principal Bassist Max Dimoff, Assistant Principal Bassist in the Philadelphia Orchestra, Joe Conyers, Performance Coach Don Green, who's helped so many musicians achieve success in the audition circuit, and so many other people. I can't name them all here. But it is great to dig into this topic with John. This is something that John has been passionate about for years and years. So we're thinking of today's episode as kind of an introduction to a series or a sub-series, maybe it'll be on this podcast, maybe it'll be somewhere else, about the orchestra business, calling that Orchestra Confidential. Now, in preparation for this, John encouraged me to listen to an episode we put out almost a decade ago called The State of the Orchestra. I had honestly forgotten (laughs) that we'd recorded this at all, but it was fascinating to listen back to, and it was a launching off point for this discussion. So what I'm doing is I'm putting that out, along with a few thoughts of my own, as a bonus episode to the conversation you're listening to right now. You can find that in the app, or you can find that through iTunes or any way you listen to the podcast, but that bonus episode will accompany this episode 412, Orchestra Confidential. All right, let's dig in with John Grillo and this exciting new project. This is Orchestra Confidential, and I'm on the line with John Grillo, my longtime collaborator, co-host for the podcast series Contrabass Conversations. And what we're doing today is, in a way, an offshoot of Contrabass Conversations. We're taking a new direction. We're talking about where the orchestra industry is, where music is, where we are now, where we've been and where we're going. John, thank you so much for chatting. Great to have you on the line. Good morning, Jason. It's awesome to be back on back on the air. So, what's the purpose of this project that we're embarking upon with Orchestra Confidential? Well, this is going to be a new podcast series and called Orchestra Confidential and my main goal with this is to present, you know, sort of a national plan, you know, to come together with the best, get the best minds in the industry together and, and move in a positive direction, um, you know, through sort of systematic planning to just get the music industry out of this rut that we're in and move forward to a more just, you know, glorious future. The most important thing I think is we were talking about this earlier offline is we really need to connect to our, um, with purpose. We need to get back to the purpose for every orchestra, every opera, every ballet. You know, why do we play? And us as individuals and as musicians, you know, why do we play? Why do we play? You know, what makes us tick? You know, this most powerful art form that we, um, that we engage in, that we love. You know, everybody loves music, except we're caught in these situations where, you know, some of these other organizations are having lots of problems, some orchestras fold, some have terrible, you know, money problems and all that kind of stuff. But so really a rebirth, you know, my, you know, the overarching goal of Orchestra Confidential is just a rebirth of the orchestral industry. And I also like using the term or- orchestral, orchestra industry, because I think industry is a more powerful word than business. So I'm going to, you know, as, as, a, as an intention of mine, I'm going to say industry, because industry, like, you know, if someone's industrious, you know, like this project is industrious, you know, industry has a power to it. You know, business, and you think, well, I just do this because we get paid and it's just a job, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that's, a, you know, jobs are important too, but I don't know, I just think there's a power in that. And you had an experience a few weeks ago that really sort of hit home that purpose concept, playing this Beethoven 9 concert. Can you talk about that? 
Yeah, well, it's interesting because, you know, even before that, we were saying, you know, we had plans to start, you know, this, you know, Orchestra Confidential once the school year started and everything. And I'm principal bass in the Princeton Symphony, and we just had an extraordinary concert. It was just, we played two concerts. It was, we did Beethoven 9 with the Westminster um, Choir College, you know, one of the best choirs you could ever do in our hall. That's one of the best halls in the world. It was just one of those magic concerts. And I went into that week, you know, thinking about our new series here and, you know, just, just from an observational level. And it was just extraordinary. And it just, you know, blew my mind, my, my own playing with the orchestra playing, the audience reaction. My parents were there. It was also the anniversary. My sister just passed away last year, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, so much of what I do is dedicated to her. But it was just such an extraordinary experience, you know, just from the, from the depths of our soul, you know, I mean, just, and we talked about that. We played a concert together. We were in Japan with the Mahler, Mahler Three, who was in Tokyo. It was just that, this outstanding. You, know, you only get those maybe once a decade, once every fifteen years. You know, you play. But but what I thought to myself, you know, well, what makes that? What makes that? You know. And I think the biggest thing it comes down to our thought. You know, it's our own thinking. It has to be our thinking. And uh, you know, part of Orchestra Confidential is we'll also tag in the notes. You know, we had, we interviewed Don Green who, if anybody hasn't listened to, you know, was an Olympic sports psychologist, really awesome, amazing, um, you know, person, has a you know, very dramatic impact on, um, you know, people's preparing for auditions and concerts and stuff. And we talked with Don, we, we go, then I was thinking, you know, it goes back to music school, you know, and we, you never really learn the proper mental training to exist. You know, we're not going to talk about music schools because that would... I'll destroy this whole program. I'll talk for <laughs> ten hours straight, <laughs> but, and it won't be positive. Right. But, um, but you know what made it? But everybody was just—I don't know—it was just thought. It's the way we thought about it. You know, mm-hmm. like your thinking creates the playing. It's all—it's all our thoughts. You know, and then, and then you know, then on mass with the industry, I think it's just a negative. You know, the negativity. The, anybody that knows me knows this has always been my soapbox. That the, you know, the negativity in the industry is just incredible you know so we'll get to that in further episodes where i just you know but i want to turn around so i want this whole thing to be this is a fresh start new beginning try to have a positive mental attitude as much as we can and i think we're going to flourish could be me you could call me crazy but <laughs> i can't see any other way how, how this industry with this glorious product we have glorious which everybody loves. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we'll, I, we'll go more on that. But, well, but I, see, the definite major purpose. So, you know, this is sort of a, a reformation, if you will. You know, this is in the present tense. I don't want to go, I don't want to go backwards. You know, we, we um, about 10 years ago, we recorded State of the Orchestra, which we both just brushed up on. Um, that's about your book and stuff, which talks a lot about the present day. And over the weekend, I listened to Matt Waters, his... Um, you know, title, the orchestra dream is dead, mm-hmm. which I love that dream is in that title because dream is thought, dream is vision. Yeah. So we could, purpose, one, of, one of the purposes of this is a new vision. And I look forward to, you know, I don't, I've never met Matt, but definitely want to hook up with him and he's going to be part of all of this. Um, but just a new perspective, a new start, you know. I mean, we could reflect on the past, but we have to just move forward with new think, a fresh start, a new beginning. But the most important thing is the positive mental attitude at all times. So if we connect back to our definite major purpose, you know, purpose in preparing for today, that's just been such a the powerful theme for me. It's just been coming back over and over and over again. It's purpose, purpose, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, purpose sort of, it runs everything. It's, it's, it's the, it's, it runs life. It, you know, think of all our planets, how they, they, they orbit in, in perfect, you know, perfect, perfect function, you know. The earth, how the sun, you know, sun comes up, sun goes down, you know, purpose, the seed, every plant, every, every seed, us, our, our families, all that kind of stuff. Um, not to say that there's not, you know, significant issues, that's be ignorant if I didn't say that, but. But maintaining a positive mental attitude, uh, respecting what's happened in the past, but going forward, fresh start, new beginning. I love that. And I, I love the goals that we've been talking about. So Orchestra Confidential, we've got some goals. Can you dig into what some of these goals are that, that we're going to be covering? 
Yeah, we sort of presented this before, but so, yeah. you know, it's sort of a creation of a, a new philosophy. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is in terms of just sort of like a success, like a performance success philosophy. Not necessarily, you know, I'm gonna, we're going to tell everybody how to play their instruments or all that, but, you know, just sort of a, you know, an overarching, um, but that more has to do with their own awareness. Like, you know, the reason why we play, you know, I love, imagine if everybody in an orchestra just plays and they just said, wow, I love this. That's probably what happened in the Beethoven. The conductor said, I love this. Everybody was playing with the music. is awesome. I mean, everything about it was just awesome. <laughs> So how could that fail? It's too crazy. Uh, but there's certain laws of success. You know, we'll get more into that as we go. But, you know, I've always been a big sort of success principles person, you know. Do you think any successful, event, uh, you know, you know, you take an inventor, you take a business, you take any, anything like that, you know, entrepreneur, anything. There's always these common traits common core values that go through that as sort of the success principles, which I think would really make a lot, a lot of help. And I thought back, I was playing a concert last year. Right before the concert, you know, I was hearing everybody talk, you know, typical orchestra people talk, you know. And finally, I just, I just burst it out. I just, to the conductor, I said, I can't believe that we think that nobody wants to come to this. You know, you hear people say that. I mean, can you imagine? Are we that, are we that damaged? Is that how much? I promise I'm not going to talk about music school, but is that how much people get just damaged? But there's a lot, but this, that's going to be part of our future series with, you know, the sort of, you know, how, the psychology of all this stuff. But, I mean, that is serious, too, because there's a lot of rejection. You know, the, we talked in former podcasts about, you know, that classical music lesson is, in some ways, it's a disaster. I feel guilty when I teach sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I remember. Remember, I had, we had a five-hour master class at the pole. Remember yeah. when you taught there? Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember. And we, we and we talked about that. I said, "Well, I have to come up and see always, you know, something is always wrong." And then the goals. And I thought, you know, you know what? I was, you know, I was listening to when, you know, when Matt, especially this came to me. I was thinking of Matt's, um, Matt Waters thing over the weekend. I said, you know, we need sort of a national plan. You know, so mm-hmm. you know, one of the one of the big goals is to build a new, innovative national plan. Which, will, which is going to consist of new paradigms, templates, and business models that will enable us to turn the industry around, you know. Mm-hmm. So this is like an action. This is an action time. This is like go time. I'm going to do it right now. That's why I don't want to get caught in just talking about the past, you know what I mean? I mean, our whole life as musicians is, 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 re- is retrospective anyway, but yeah, yeah, we, we get caught in the past because, you know, anyway, but that sort of a thing. And we'll see how that goes. And then that also includes the creation of a national task force. Mm-hmm. You know, a mastermind of leaders to organize and implement this plan. Because what comes after purpose is plan, you know. Mm-hmm. And then it's the desire to execute that plan. So, you know, I work with some orchestras, you know, they don't have a plan. So I call them up. They're in terrible shape. This is part of my consulting business. I say, you know, we start talking. I say, the you know, first thing that anybody in, with business is going to say is, what's the plan? They, someone just told me the other day, I have no plan. Yeah, that's not a, that's not a great uh, <laughs> foundation because to, music to launch is good, but, yeah. Right. So imagine if we just do like 2% energy into, into music, it'll just, it'll just, you know, just go through the roof. Um, but I think that's cool, and I'll lead that. I mean, a national task force, you know, all the best leaders, all the best masterminds. <laughs> Like, you know, some of the other people you've had on the show, you know, I haven't, Andrew Hitz is an old friend of mine, but I need to reconnect with him. And Tracy has a podcast. You know, we went to Indiana together, but, um, you know, really get the talk going. I mean, we have to just change, change the talk. It's very important. But the most important thing is definiteness of purpose, I think. You know, what's our definite purpose in music? What's my purpose? You know, maybe that's what happened to me in that concert. I just really connected to this, that purpose. You know, this is my God-given talent. You know, we have the ability to do this. We have the ability to hear this music. Mm-hmm. I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I absolutely know what you mean. I, I love that it's that, that we're talking about not... It, we get so caught up in the past, like you said, as musicians. And to have... A, a definite purpose and a definite direction forward and pull the best people thinking about this 
this industry and where we are and where we're going and coming up with a plan. I think that's incredibly valuable. And you know, there are a lot of orchestras that are on the brink of falling apart. You know, it, it, a lot of groups in the orchestra industry that are, that are on the brink of falling apart, but there are a lot of orchestras that have thrived and are thriving. So we've got some great models here, right? We've got Vienna Philharmonic's a great model, Berlin Philharmonic. What is it about these models? What, what can we learn from these models to incorporate into this new plan going forward? Well, we were talking about this a couple of days ago. Um, you know, we got to work and be around the members of the Vienna Philharmonic a lot mm-hmm. and play with them too. Yeah. So I remember we were first stand, if you remember correctly. Remember we <laughs> I played remember. The, the, the principals were Vienna Philharmonic. Uh-huh. Imagine that. Yeah. Violin, viola, cello, bass, Fritz and Hans and all those fun guys. We spent so much time with them. Me and Jason were first stand. The other, our other friend just let us step up there. But uh, yeah. What an amazing hall. I mean, but but. We, I spent in that new world. I spent so much time with these guys. They were my friends, and we just would constantly talk about. You know, I constantly prodded them about just their philosophy and how they thought about stuff, and mm-hmm. it was just so radically different than the way we do. You know, we could maybe that's probably going to have to take more time than today. But you know, like they would say things like, uh, "I would talk about some things here in our orchestras," and one guy said to me, "90s music." He got all upset. He walked away from the table. <laughs> I mean, that's not music. Yeah. I forgot. But, uh, you know, just their energy. But we all picked up on that because you go see them play, but it comes back to their thoughts. It's how they think. It's what they think about it, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And granted, you know, people are going to say, oh, yeah, well, the government pays for it, all this stuff. But, um, but the Vienna Philharmonic is a private orchestra. No one knows that. They also said to us, why do you keep talking about the Vienna Philharmonic? I thought that was very strange. <laughs> They just said, you know, we're an opera orchestra. You know? <laughs> That's a great which, point. Yeah. Which, yeah, which is different too. Like they play every day, except for like Christmas and Easter. And I was in Vienna. I couldn't even find the music for Ryan. I'm walking around. It's like some concert hall somewhere. You go in the middle of the city there. It's the second biggest building after the, the St. Stephen's Cathedral, you know, this huge building with all this ornate art, paintings and statues, you know, wow, the Opa, you know. Mm-hmm. They kept saying, in Opa, and then, and then mistakes, we talk about mistakes. They kept saying, why do you guys keep talking about mistakes? They don't care. If you remember one concert, they were, they were all over the place. The Vienna film, they're coming in wrong. Because first rehearsal for them is different. That first rehearsal is like 50% playing. All they do is kind of play through and do bowings and just kind of get the architecture of the music and stuff. And then I remember their, uh, I forgot his name. What's the guy's name? Hon- uh, Honig? Honig. Honig. His brother is the, con- is the conductor. But we were sitting there and he said, you know, he's, he's saying, Opa, he said, there's too many notes to worry about mistakes. I love that. I <laughs> forgot that. <laughs> there's too many notes. But imagine if you take mistakes off the table, you know. And our bass coach, you know, he said, well, I said, what, you know, what are you? How, you know, how, how do you look at yourself within this whole structure of the NFL? He said, I'm a preservationist. Wow. Interesting. Here to preserve the see how about how it goes back to purpose those guys you know that's they're there to preserve the German culture I mean that's sort of talk for another time but um but just being around those guys and they would come they would do our coachings and sexuals and they would just come up to us and say just you know more just play you know energy energy or you know when you same thing in New York one time you see the Berlin Philharmonic play I don't know it's just different I don't know, you hang out with those guys you know. Another thing I forgot to mention, you know, we're going to talk about this. I haven't found it. I'm looking for it. But when I was in college, I remember the Harvard Business School did a very famous job satisfaction survey. And some of our listeners probably know this. But orchestra members came, were always on the bottom of the list. Wow. I think federal prison guards were higher than that. Fascinating. (laughs) One of the lowest job satisfaction rates in the country. So we'll touch on that more, but that has to do with all this sort of, you know, negative programming. Don Green calls it, what do you call it? Oh, negative reinforcement. Negative That's reinforcement, Don, Don, yeah. yeah. It's mm-hmm. a sea, there's an ocean of negativity in the cesspools mm-hmm. at times. Mm-hmm. 
I, I love but that. Interestingly yeah. enough, at the top of that list, the top of that list was string quartets in terms of jobs. So one of the highest job satisfactions was string quartets, which is interesting. So we'll get more into that later. But, but I think part of, the, but part of this model business is too is, I mean, this may sound too idealistic to people, but we're artistic people. But, you know, vision comes first. You know, we're going to talk about quotes later, but, you know, Einstein says, well, imagination is is more important than knowledge, you know? We need to connect. We have to focus more on our imagination. You know, that's our vision. That's our vision. To see this negativity and fear and anxiety, so much anxiety. I mean, I want want everybody today just to take a deep breath, all right? (laughs) I mean... Take a deep breath. But, but that's it. But what makes the best concerts? And I was thinking, you know, I wanted this to be the best concert I've ever played. I was just sort of, I was just sort of playing with myself. You know, I was, I was just like, you know, I was just like making a, make, you know, making a challenge. You know, when I was saying to the people in the orchestra, like, you know, let's make, I want to make this the best. I want this to be the best concert in the world. You know, I think it was the best concert in the world. But, um, but that's important too. So, and there's been this great American orchestras too. So don't don't get me wrong on that. But you know, we wanted to talk about our experiences with those guys. You know, if we could reconnect with those guys. I would love to have those guys on. Yeah, no, they'd be fa- they'd be fantastic. And you know, like a a, um, uh, uh, a sentiment like that. I want this to be, be the best concert in the world. People think what's the audacity of thinking something like that? But that those are the sort of those are the sort of things that do. You know, that's that's how we got the the beautiful churches and architecture and pieces and and that audacity of thought is what <laughs> propels society forward and it's it's interesting talking about imagination is more important than knowledge and just as we look in all our institutions inside and especially outside of music are are collapsing going through major change and that's the thing that keeps on getting hammered home in every business and in every industry is what what do we have to offer that artificial intelligence can't offer that the the rise of all these new structures can't offer it's it's imagination so i think it's beautiful i love these quotes we're going to dig into quotes but and we're also going to talk about just getting back to basics right fundamentals back to basics can you just talk yeah, about yeah. that yeah 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 we definitely and then that that's part of this reformation if you will mhm you know, I, I like renewal. I was trying to come up with a word. What's a good renewal? You know, you have restoration. That's okay. That sounds more like real estate or yeah, whatever, right. church or something. You know, what else? You know, you know, this, what the, you know these, all these words have power because they become our thoughts. You know, thought is, thought is the power, like you said, the audacity of thought, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and talk about fundamentals, you know, back to Einstein. You know, he's a, he's a, he's a violinist. He said if he wasn't a physicist, physicist he'd be a musician, you know. And he often said, I often think in terms of music, I love that. I text people that all the time. I think I sent you that list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. You have, you, have, you, have, you have Einstein with his violin. Wow. You know, I think it, relativity is a musical phenomenon. He said, wow. You know? Yeah. And then this is going to, I don't want to get too scientific, but then you have E equals MC squared, energy equals mass. How is that not holding a violin and drawing a bow? <laughs> right. <laughs> so we want to teach people violin. We want people to learn about nature and physics and the cosmos and the universe. I mean, that's like, that's it right there. It's the heart of the universe, vib- the laws of vibration. But back to fundamentals. No, no, no. Just back to basics. Like, you know, some businesses are very successful. You know, they have major, tur- multi billion dollar turns around, turnarounds with that. You know, you get so complicated until, you know, you're. All this stuff, you know, business models, cash, money, and all this stuff. And then they just sit down, you know, back to basics, you know, back to basics. You know, like, even with us, like, you know, I would love to have some sessions of just, you know, something that, you know, the lay person can listen to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, one of my old friends, you know, he looked up, he was just Googling me, and he said, he just wanted to know what I was up to in music and stuff. And he listened to one of our podcasts, and he thought it was just way too complicated. <laughs> you know, we're talking about bass. <laughs> right. He said, I think I heard a G string or something. You know, he's like, well, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> so he gets so, so over complex, you know what I mean? But just back to basics, you know, just the fact that we just play music, like everybody loves music. And part of this comes from my, my two daughters I have now, two beautiful girls. They're just starting to... Um, 
Actually, the same week as the Beethoven, this was extraordinary. They both had their first piano lesson. I sat in. And then the end of the week was the Beethoven 9. So for me, that was an interesting bookend. I was at the, the total beginning of music. They're just playing the two black keys on the piano. I think the song was called Black Ants or something. <laughs> right. So they played the two keys together, you know, so that the, but the, the core, you know, that's the, the nucleus of music, you know. Mm-hmm. And then by the end of the week, we're just rocking it out with all those crazy passages and, you know, you know what. Um, But back to basics, and it's lost. It's totally lost. Even when I go watch concerts, it's lost. You know? And I know it's tough. Look, I've I've been through the ups and downs of the music business, you know. I'm the, right, don't you think? Because oh, everybody can do this. Yeah, absolutely. I've had, I've had the best. You know, I've had the best. You know, talking about riches. You know, riches. We went to we lived in Japan for a month. You know, I got paid. I lived in Italy for a month for mm-hmm. summer, whole summer. All I did was play opera and just eat outrageous food and have like free wine every day. <laughs> um, but I went through lots of ups and downs. You know, sometimes people's planes crash. But sometimes that's a blessing, too, you know? Things just start to go wrong, you know? But you just pull out of that, you know? It's just the way it goes to cycle, you know? It, it but, but, and for younger kids, too, and remember, this applies to everybody, you know? And the professional, you know, most of the, the, the business part of this is going to focus on professional, professional organizations, you know? Symphonies, opera, ballet, whatever, big band, I know, it's all the same principles, but like I said, music school's out. Someone else is going to have to deal with that. Um, I mean, I'll build nude schools, but I can't deal with that. Um, but even for the younger kids, I, and, I, and I was in the music school the other night, the kids are going bananas for their instruments. Oh. Mm-hmm. There was a girl there. Her mom was renting a clarinet. They, they said, you want it for four months or ten months? The girl started jumping up and down. Said, ten months, ten months. <laughs> It reminds me, remember the way everybody was when you were younger, we were playing. I mean, I was, I was fanatical. They used to call me a fanatic. Mm -hmm. It's a maniac. I went to a lesson once with, I wrote questions. I had 250 questions about the bass. I mean, who does that? But we all do that. I'm sure there's, I mean, I've seen a lot of people do that. But what happens, and, and then, then what's next on our list here, you know, so that's, that could be a lot, you know, just basic scale, you know, even just getting back to the scale, the laws of vibration, you know, the history of music. Look, you go back through ancient Greece and Plato's Republic, the whole subject of Plato's Republic is musical scales. Wow. I wish that was our, own politi- our only political problem these days. Um, no, but it's, I know, but that's part of the rethink. So, yeah, I, you know, there'll be plenty of resistance to this, but, I mean, I, you expect resistance when you have, um, you know, new ideas, revolution, or what have you. Well, and music, you know, music predates, pre, predates, you know, s- the spoken language, all these disciplines. You think, how old is mathematics? Several thousand years old, right? How old is is philosophy several thousand years old how far back can we find evidence of music in past societies 40,000 years 50,000 years right going into cave paintings i mean this this is this is an innate part of our humanity we and and so i mean going back to basics that's a that's a big deal that's like this is a part of 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 who we are and who we have been and who we're going to continue to be. I mean, it's, it's baked into our, our DNA. Yeah. And especially, you know, I think after I've had children too, it really, my whole, my whole musical philosophy just took a different course, you know? And when you sing the lullaby, I miss that. They're, they're getting a little older now, but while you sing a lullaby for a kid to go to sleep, well, you, you have to sing the children to have them go to sleep. And then I read, I think it went through Harvard, not the business school, but Harvard, one of the medical schools at Harvard. They think that the building blocks of music is the lullaby, like the, like the, the you know, the work where music have ever came from, you know? Yeah. However, hundreds of thousands of years ago, so. But it goes back to just, you know, you have correct thinking or incorrect thinking. And I, I don't want to come across as I, I'm not saying I know, I'm saying I know every, more than anybody else. I don't want that to be the case at all. This has nothing to do with me. This has to do with the, the industry. I just feel like this is a, 
it's always been my you know, strong desire to um, do this. You know, everybody's always told me that I need to do this too. But, um, but see, it gets back, and this is it's hard. It's almost making me think of music school. But you know, the next thing on our list is sort of quotes and affirmations. I mean, this sort of positive. You know, to have a more positive frame of mind, you have to constantly work at it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, we'll talk about this. I actually need to write about this, but I told you about the Grillo. I have the faith versus fear continuum. We've talked about that. Yeah. You know, that's the meter. You know, faith can mean a lot of things to people. It could be religious faith. It could be confidence in yourself. It could be, the, you know, the, the desire within to accomplish a dream. It's, you know, faith, that's a whole other, you know, obviously that could take a million different directions, but musical sense I think that's just you know when we're playing that's just going to be our sort of you know belief in ourselves. I guess right you know what I mean if you go up there to play I'm, you know, I could play the, you know and it's all your thoughts it's not you know one thing we have to stress over and over again with Don Green and with the TED Talks you know maybe we should attach that to this too all the Don Green stuff the mm-hmm. TED Talk mm-hmm. he said while well, they're realizing that there's no such thing as muscle memory oh, wow yeah yeah. Maybe that's the lecture. I'll set up a lecture series at every every major music school in the country. I'll go. I'll talk for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you pull pull everybody out of their practice gyms. Okay, everybody, here we go. We're in the big assembly here. Oh no, he's he's gonna lecture to us for two hours. Hey, everybody, guess what? Maybe get Don Green on the screen. There's no such thing as muscle memory. Wow. Holy moly, the muscles they just contract and release wow but what's the most important thing like the myelination and all that stuff you know that's mm-hmm. too complicated to get into now but the dream how it and then you know you have you know now there's people they do MRIs of musicians when they're playing and then they do it when they're just thinking about playing and it's the same MRI screen I want to have one of those doctors on too that'd be awesome yeah I remember that's Don Green. We talked about that with Don Green. So if, you're play, if, you, if you have whatever instrument you have in your hands and you're playing and you play, you know, your brain has certain functions. Um, and when you don't and you just think about it, it's the same MRI screen. And in some cases, it's even stronger. Don Green said that. Wow. But that's part of our new system. That's part of this renaissance is the thought. The thought is the creation. And that's what gets that's what gets stamped out of all of us. That's the rebirth. That's the that's to be the you know to become a new. To, that's part of the renewal. You know, I know it's hard, and it's people are going to struggle with all of this. But that's why we're going to we have to come up with a system. We need a we need a we need a, we need a you know like a what are they called? They call it um. Oh, it comes to me. Hold on, I'm missing them. But, but affirmations, you know, every, you know, that's one of the most powerful. You know, the people that are the best musicians, that, it, they have, they have, they have the skill and the ability to just have, they say the right things over and over and over to themselves. You know, and they say the most powerful thing about a mistake, the most powerful thing about a mistake, is thinking about one. Wow, I read that. Some famous psychologist said that, even in terms of life, more than music, but. And here you have the concert master of the Vienna Philharmonic who had box violin, by the way. Remember he held it up? He said, this is box violin. Wow. I mean, maybe that would help if I played box instruments. It's by an opa, an opa. There's too many notes. There's too many notes to work. What, what does it matter? Playing 200,000 million notes in a Mozart opera. Does not matter? It's the energy of the music, you know? The communication. Same thing with talking, you know. Talking's the same. I mean, we're off, you know, it's a language too. You know, maybe that's that. That goes back to our the fundamentals. You know, you speak the language. You know, how many people say we had our guests on with all this? Oh, you know, I just I was ha- I felt good head there. I just smiled, played. Wow. <laughs> and I've been there. I mean, I know what it's like to just be in the tank. Um. And if anybody never said they've never done that, that's BS. You know, all this stuff goes up and down. Well, you know, I can't help but thinking about that, our conversation with Joe Conyers. You know, you're, you're re- referencing making a mistake and the most powerful thing is, is, is just thinking about it. I remember him just describing his 
his outlook, his in those audition rounds, and he was almost laughing behind the screen. He was having such a good time, and he just made the conscious decision to focus on certain things. And I mean, what can we control, right? In life, in music, whatever, we can control what we think about and how we frame it. And so I think, I think just what you're saying, being inspired, being motivated by those sayings about our craft, whether it's from Einstein or from Leonard Bernstein or whoever, and then just having affirmations. Like, uh, I think you mentioned every day in every way, I'm getting better and better, right? Powerful yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's a famous, that's a yeah. French, that comes from a French, it's like early 20th century, I think his name is Coué, I think, C-O-U-E, but then that was a big movement in sort of the early 20th century, I came to America in the 1920s in the newspapers and stuff, and that was a big thing, every newspaper just published that, wow, these, these, these little sayings, and I forget the first time I read that, that was probably in life, you know. But the thing with this is that you you would say that over and over and over again. Can you imagine if you took that to an orchestra rehearsal? <laughs> I know, but but the thing is, but I, and then, so that's the thing. We have our thought. We have this thought revolution, right? You know, gotta get back to that. But we, but but this is the whole thing with Don Green. He said he was amazed he would go to these music sc- music schools. You know. Even even young opera training programs, you know, young young artists, you know, musician artist training programs, you know. He said that one girl, they they were so they were so filled with anxiety that they couldn't even sing La Boheme. Right. He worked through these people. He said that the divers are forty meters off the ground; they could kill themselves. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "I can't sing. I can't sing." Or it's a, or it's sort of like a charismatic. I don't know. I'm a charismatic person, you know. You know, but you have to go to that because you can go to the other way. I, I've been I've been on the other side of that. You know, mm-hmm. I've been through the low. Everybody goes through low parts in your life, tough times. You know, you know, that's all true. I want to make sure that's discussed. You know, and it's and it, and then well, I, and I, I, I'm just starting to hear. You know, the other side. People are listening to oh, this you know this program or whatever. Because you know, it's not the money. They could say, oh, oh, in Europe, they, uh, you know, they do get significant government funding. But there was Vienna guys. They were, they were, ar- they were complaining about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, comes with all kinds of stipulations, workplace rules. You know, no, it's not just Pollyanna. They give you the money. They can also take it away. I mean, not with the Vienna Philharmonic, but other. I know a friend of mine. I think he was in Spain when they just pulled it away. They just said, nope. <laughs> Happened to some opera houses in Italy. They got five million every year. He says, "You know what? It's just gone. You know, forget it." Yeah, but all this stuff. This that. This this doesn't. I have to make this point true. People are gonna come after me for this, but the industry doesn't suffer because of lack of money. It's true. That's true in business. Any business. You talk to any consultant. Find any consultant that's that's worth their ilk, and they'll tell you that it's the system. How could there be enough money? Look at the, even they say no, it's fear. It's, that's its own fear in the culture. Oh, there's no money, no money. I mean, there's no money. This, this is the richest country ever. I mean, I, I, I don't want to get into politics, but look at the $10, million, $10 trillion budget. $10 trillion. <laughs> look, look at your local municipalities. Millions of dollars. These local commu- well, endowments, I'm a big endowment person. That's, that would be more of a business episode, but you have the, some of the smallest community colleges of these billion-dollar endowments. You know, Princeton, my, well, Princeton's different. You know, we're a you know, high-level professional orchestra, but it's, you know, where we play on the campus of Princeton University. They have the biggest endowment in the world. It's like large, it's larger than most African nations. But you know, a lot of people, it's the product. You know, you have to think they go to the concert, they go, oh, you know, I don't want to go there anymore. You know? And, and that's a different, that's a different, it, and I think it's good to just highlight, like, the, the, that's why it's so important to reconnect with the basics, the fundamentals, your why, like why we're into that. Then we go back to like your daughter and the experience of playing those two notes on the piano, right? And this beauty. And I like, and like, <laughs> look, I want to, oh, do I want the two month or the 10 month rental? I want the 10 month rental on the clarinet, right? So, <laughs> so this, I mean, so, so it's, I think it's, it's really interesting to zoom out 
and look at that. And I think that that scarcity abundance thing that you're connected with is super important. And I, I got to say, yesterday, you you encouraged me to re-listen to that State of the Orchestra from almost a decade ago, right? So I was listening to myself chat about these topics. And now, uh, 10 years later, I'm a lot savvier just in terms of the business world and things outside of the music world. And I just, I, I was like arguing with that younger Jason as I'm talking about like scarcity miles. And there, there we, it's so easy to see a world of scarcity in music, in our upbringing, going through music school, entering this profession, whether it's freelance or a full-time orchestra or academia or whatever. But it's just, but just what you're hitting home, I think it's, is so true. You know, I mean, there are people online that are making six figure incomes writing about dog leashes, right? <laughs> the problem is not a lack of funds. No, no. Now it's the system now in the system. Yeah. Like coming out of the recording industry, that's a big hit for the music business. Yeah. We'll talk more about that another day, but that was, I played one, I remember I played one of the last commercial recordings. I remember it was the front page of the New York Times, you know, they just said that, you know, they don't, it's like a waste of time. Mm -hmm. But that's, but that has to do with a system. I don't know, it's a system. They were in these stores, not all over the place, I mean. And who, I, I don't know, I want, I, I want to go see a concert anyway. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I listen to recordings a lot, but, well, well, plus we have this new medium. Look at the podcast, look at this. Wow. Mm -hmm. People, I mean, and, and you know, we have listeners all over the world. I just say this is a this is, you know, first this will start as this is a United States project here. So, but one thing I have in my notes here that I, I want to stress too is that it's a national plan. But you know, I I wrote here. Of course, this action will take into account local market conditions and markets, which is true. Mm -hmm. Because every marketplace is different, but the basic national plan of, you know, or where's the center? Where, you know, where's, they're lost. I've, I walked in, I was thinking this morning, I walked into, a, I met with a lot of CEOs from orchestras. I would walk in there and sit down and respectfully, I would just say, all right, how is this going to turn around? What, you know, what's the solution here? I don't know. They don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, there has to be a solution. I don't know. That's my. That's where I'm going with this. Okay. So okay. So okay. So we have the most. So, so it's the most powerful medium that affects people on the most deepest level. <laughs> but you know, I'm, I I don't want to talk too much science. But it gets back to Newton. You have potential energy. You have kinetic energy. The conservation of energy. You know, energy can't be created or destroyed. So these orchestras, are, they're virtual orchestras. You know, most orchestras, the orchestras that you play in right now are not playing. Right. <laughs> Princeton Symphony's not playing. Maybe some orchestras are in rehearsal now. I don't know what day is today, Monday? What, Thursday? You know? You know, Monday, that universal day off. You know, the whole culture goes back to work, except for musicians. It's funny. <laughs> right. right. Maybe clergy. People that have church on Sunday or something, the Monday off. Um, yeah, so how could it fail? It can't fail. It's impossible for it. It's a failure of thought. It's a thought failure. I was working with one group. They had no administration. Can you imagine? And it was still functioning. They had concerts. <laughs> well, you see it now. There's orchestras. They have no CEO, no leader. Wow. I mean, come on. If you had a restaurant, if 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 you was, I always, I've always said this for years, decades. I said, if you ran a lemonade stand, the way these orchestras conduct business, well, they, you would you would last about two hours. <laughs> 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 but the pop, that's and that's why this will all, everything will always come back to purpose. De you know, our definite major purpose. What's our purpose? What's my individual purpose? You know. Yeah. You know, but that takes it's a change of thought. It's a paradigm shift. You know. You know, wow, can we, can we actually allow ourselves to think that we play well? I mean, God forbid. Some people do, you know. You know, we'll put this at the top, too. You know, you know go back to quotes. One of my favorite quotes goes back to Virgil. It's very famous. It says, you know, they can because they think they can. Wow. Wow. My mom's classroom, she was an elementary school teacher. She said, it's famous from... Um, I think it was Henry Ford. said, if you think you can, if you think you can't, you will. Wow. 
how many friends you have, they go to take an audition and say, you know what, I just had a feeling about this one. Wow. Where does this feeling come from? It comes from our thoughts, you know. It's also in our heart, too. It's innate, but that one little glimpse, that tiny little thought, you say, you know what, I think I'm going to have this one today. Wow. Let's see. We need that training. It has to be proactive. You got to you got to stay at it all the time, or this sort of fear, anxiety, and depression that comes out of music schools. That in some ways that's just like a cancer. I, but I promised I wasn't going to talk about music schools. And <laughs> there's a lot of good things that happens, but uh, you know, I think on mass we could say, well, you know, it's just a lack of, and sort of, and you may get it from your teacher. You're at the mercy of your teacher, you know. But it's important because you know you have basically have the six basic fears. You know, we'll get into that one lesson, but you know, fear of poverty, fear, fear of loss. You know, it's just, and I've lived through that. You know, everybody says to you, oh, "You can't make a living in music." You know, no one's going to make any money doing that. Look at some of the richest people in history, musicians. Look at Elvis. I used to play in Memphis. That's a shrine. That's one of the biggest shrines in the country, this guy. Dancer, singer, guitar player, you know? I think, this, I think Paul McCartney one is, was one of the richest persons in the world. The lady who wrote Harry Potter, she's an author. Wow. Don't write any books. You're not going to make any money at that. Look at that. That's just a thought. You know, wow, so we're going to engage. Well, that's why we come back to our definite purpose. You know, what's the purpose? What's the purpose of our orchestras? The purpose of our operas? You know, our lessons, in music schools. You know, why we play music? You know, look how big music is in church. All the hymns singing it goes back hundreds of years. Mm-hmm. Christmas. Imagine, imagine, imagine going through Christmas with no music. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. You just sit there and look at your Christmas tree. I have the radio going on all the time. It's, they're still, my daughters are still playing Jingle Bells on the piano. It's like summertime. They go, dong, 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 F sharp. It's just five fingers on the piano. <laughs> uh, or a wedding. You go to a wedding. There's no music at the wedding, you know? But I think we need this. We need, we need this system. We need this a new system. That's it. Well, I'm excited about this this new project. I think it's great. It's it's great to have been for the past, you know, many years kind of circling around these topics and I think it's great to approach this with a fresh start, you know, new beginning, positive attitude and and digging into these concepts. So I I'm I'm excited for this, John. And I think, you know, and we want people to communicate with us, you know, it's just like, this is just a, you know, this is a, you know, a graph from the base blog, you know, some a similar type thing, you know. So, you know, have people, you know, send us, you know, send us in, let's connect. That's, the, that's, the, you know, that's also, you know, it's the power of this podcasting medium, you know. Let's get it together, you know, send this to your colleagues at school. Let's, let's, let's get the, the, let's get the conversation going, you know. Yeah, Agreed. You know? mm-hmm. And if you and if you can get to these places a little earlier, before you know, usually orchestras start to address this stuff when they're at like the end of the rope, you know. And it's debt. That's a whole other discussion. But the debt, what really kills an orchestra, and I hate to say it because I want, I don't want an orchestra to ever die, but is the debt. But that's that's for another day. But yeah. no, but this is exciting because this this podcast medium, you know, how, how do we? I always wanted to turn this into an environmental. You know, how, how do we affect our our environment, you know. So that's what this is a push forward to for. And with Matt's program in our show notes, we'll have um, let's list every you know whatever we had that had to do with the orchestra, and it has to do with bass players too because we bass players we play in orchestras, you know. I mean, we play recitals and solo stuff, but I mean, so I think it's pertinent. You know, we've always sort of talked as a get off topic of bass and stuff, but I mean. This is our workplace. This is where we end up, you know, utilizing our craft. So there's relationship to the to the bass blah. Well, and whether it's whether you're in the orchestral world or not, or to whatever degree, I think there are lessons to derive from that. So so even if that's not your your primary jam, that there's there's plenty to take away from the conversation we're having right now and the conversations we will have. All right, Jason. Well, thanks for having me today. I mean, I, our goal today was an introduction to our mm-hmm. this new podcast, and I'm really excited about it. I've thought about this for a long time, and then 
but we need action. You know, we just need a plan. We have our purpose. We need to create a plan, and then we have to imp- and then we have to implement it. So, we can't sit. You know, I don't want to sit around and just talk about this anymore. We got to get out there and make it happen. And guys like Matt Waters and Andrew Hitz and all these people that do these awesome programs. You know, we all need to we all need to connect together and and get this going. Sounds good. Well, thanks for the great idea, and I, I'm excited for the future. All right, Jason. Have a good day. Take care, my friend. Yeah, you too, John. There you have it, folks. Orchestra Confidential, episode one. It's been something we've been talking about for years and years and years, and here's the start. John mentioned contact info. John has an email from the podcast, through the podcast, Grillo, G-R-I-L-L-O, at ContrabassConversations.com. Grillo at ContrabassConversations.com, and there's a link to that in the show notes as well. So if you have any thoughts on this project or would like to get involved in some capacity, email John and we'll get the ball rolling. Thank you so much for listening. You may not be a bass player if you're listening to this. If you are a bass player and you found this interesting, that's awesome. It's a big part of my life. It's something that I've been in the orchestra industry ever since I was a teenager. So while I realize we have a lot of amateur players and bluegrass players and jazz players and people that have little to no interest in the orchestra profession, yeah, it's it's a big part of a lot of people's life. So I hope that you enjoyed listening to this. And if you'd like to reach out to me about anything regarding the podcast, feedback at ContrabassConversations.com will put you in touch. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you again soon, but also with that bonus episode I mentioned. So check that out if you'd like to hear the conversation that inspired all of this. We will see you again soon for more life on the low end of the spectrum. 